Okay, here's the first one. Myth or true? Carrots can help you see in the dark. Myth. While carrots are full of vitamin A, which helps maintain eyesight, you won't get night vision. In the 1940s, British Air Forces invented a new radar, and to keep it secret, they told everyone it was carrots that helped them see at nighttime. Diamonds aren't a special gemstone. True. While diamonds may be a great engagement rock, they're not as rare as we've been made to believe. Advertising campaigns have made this very common rock something extraordinary. If you want something really rare, painite gems will look beautiful and empty your wallet at the same time. Around $50,000 a carat. Fruit Loops have different flavors. Myth. There's no point in avoiding the color you don't like. All the colors are the same flavor. Even Kellogg's has stated that they all share the same blended fruit flavor. Well, now I don't know what to believe anymore. Dropping a penny from the Empire State Building can obliterate a person below. Myth. While the penny won't tickle, it will not damage anyone on the ground. Simply, the penny can't build up enough speed while it's tumbling to the ground. Better to just keep the change in your pocket. The moon has a dark side. Myth. No, the moon isn't going to use the force to rule. Our satellite is tidally locked with the Earth, meaning that we're always looking at one side. But there's no permanent dark side. Kleenex was originally designed for gas masks. True. Yeah, Kimberly Clark originally designed a thin cotton substitute to be used as a filter. In 1924, Kleenex began selling in the U.S. as a cold cream and makeup remover, eventually turning into the soft tissues we love today. Chocolate is bad for you. Boy, isn't that a myth. (laughs) While too much chocolate, just like too much of anything, can indeed do some harm, a little bit can be quite good for you. Not just any chocolate, though, only the dark variety. Yum. Weekend sleep-ins will help you catch up on lost sleep. That's a myth. As comfy as your bed is on a Sunday morning, you just can't make up for lost sleep. Irregular sleep can lower your concentration and performance. If you're refreshed when you wake up, you've had the right amount. Zombies are real. True! Now, no human has ever turned into a hungry zombie that were shown so much in the movies, but they do exist in the animal kingdom. A fungus that has a really long name I don't want to pronounce takes over ants with its chemicals. Under the control of the fungus, the ant leaves its family to find a very specific branch or leaf. Then it lets the fungus sprout out of it and release spores back into the world. How delightful! The largest living organism is the blue whale, African elephant, or shack. (laughs) Myth. While all of those are large, The honey fungus in the Blue Mountains, Oregon, wins by quite a bit. With the length of 3.4 miles, that's six and a half Burj Khalifa's end-to-end, and it's still growing. But on the bright side, it's edible. Mushroom omelet, anyone? Turkeys can blush. True! Just like humans, turkeys blush when excited, angry, or sick. The skin on their heads and necks can turn red or even a shade of blue. The fleshy flap of skin that hangs over their neck is called a snood. It also turns bright red when the bird is excited. Yeah, maybe not at Thanksgiving, though. We only have five senses. Myth. There's no right number. Some say 5, 7, 14, 24, or even 57. Our most basic senses are actually sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch but also movement, body position, temperature, balance, and the sense of our internal state, like feeling your heart. For example, close your eyes and touch your nose. That's proprioception, or body position. Bats are blind. Myth! Bats' eyesight is actually better at nighttime than ours. They just can't see as well in daytime, because they only see in black and white. Perhaps this myth arose from the fact that bats use sonar to navigate without sight. Unicorns are real. True. They're not horses, though. It's deer that are likely the culprit. 
A single horn can be a genetic anomaly found in some species, possibly leading to the unicorn legend that formed a long time ago. Sorry, Scotland, it may be your national animal, but it's not the right picture. Honey never spoils. Myth. Uncovered in a humid environment, it will spoil. As long as the lid stays on it and no water is added to it, honey shouldn't go bad, though. Having antifungal and antibacterial properties means no organisms can live in it. No matter how old your stored honey is, it's probably perfectly edible. Oranges are always orange. Myth. Sweet oranges are a hybrid of tangerines and the pomelo, with a bright green skin to help protect them from the sun. In warmer climates, like Southeast Asia, oranges are still a bright green when ripe. Makes you wonder what came first, the fruit or the color. There are bugs in your strawberry frappuccino. True. Eh, but not anymore. A dye made of ground-up tiny insects called cochineal bugs is used by many companies to make the color red. Starbucks stopped using bug red color in their strawberry frappuccinos in 2015. Firefighters use wetter water. True. To be more efficient at stopping fires, firefighters recently started adding certain chemicals to the water. The wetting agents reduce the surface tension of the water, making it easier to spread and soak into objects. Leave wasps alone and they'll leave you alone. Myth. While this works for bees, their cousins, the yellow jackets, will disagree. Known as one of the most bad-tempered wasps, they've been said to sting unprovoked, even if you just happen to walk by their nest. If you see wasps, give them a wide berth. The Eiffel Tower was supposed to be torn down after 20 years. True. The Eiffel Tower was designed to show off France's industrial power during the World's Fair. The designers cleverly put transmitters and antennas on top to make the tower too useful to eventually demolish. Head lice prefer dirty hair. Myth. Lice don't really think about hair cleanliness. They simply need human hair to hang on to, whether it's squeaky clean or greasier than a fryer. Lice feed off of our scalps, and the hair is just a place to hang out. Camel's humps store water. Myth. Camels don't store water. They store fat in their tissues, just like me after the holidays. These reservoirs of fat allow camels to survive for days in the desert without stopping for food. They drink large amounts of water at a time and store that in their bloodstream. You need to drink 8 glasses of water a day. Myth. Staying hydrated is critical, especially in hotter weather. But we seem to forget that every drink is mainly water, even tea and coffee. Our bodies are the best indicators for when to drink water. Feel thirsty? Then it's time to have a drink. An elephant never forgets. True. Having the biggest brain of all land animals, elephants should have a great memory. And they do. Being able to remember their entire territory friends, and spots to find water is crucial to the social structure of elephants. They might even have a better memory than you and I. Now, where did I leave my keys? Bananas grow upside down. True. Bananas grow naturally towards the sun as they're getting larger. That's why there's a curve. So does that mean we've been peeling them the wrong way this whole time? Maybe. No number before 1,000 contains the letter A. True. Now you can try and spell each number out if you like, but I bet you're just going to take my word for it. The Guinness Book of World Records was created to settle arguments. True. The world's best trivia book was published in 1955 after an argument about the fastest game bird in Europe. The managing director of Guinness Brewery realized there wasn't a go-to book for trivial questions, so he created his own, and the rest is history. You're eating real wasabi. Myth. When you're sitting down for tasty sushi, that green paste sometimes isn't wasabi, it's horseradish. Real wasabi is very expensive with a milder taste to it. 
If it's not made in front of you, it's not going to be the real thing. So there. Every time you turn on a toaster or put your phone on charge, you use the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. You could travel around the globe 10 times in just one second at that speed. A trip from Earth to the Moon would take the same time. And the journey from the Earth to the Sun would take about 8 minutes. And that's the speed at which you get an electric current in your outlet. Now, throw all your high school physics textbooks away because everything we've been taught about electricity is false. They say an electric current is the flow of charged particles, electrons. Forget about that. In fact, they don't even move. Let's look at a conductor with a current. This is how electrons actually behave. It's like a C wave. They are attracted to each other and then they return to their places. But we still get the energy we need through the electric and magnetic fields that form around the current conductor. Let's take the simplest circuit, a battery and a light bulb. One wire connects the minus of the battery to the light bulb, the other wire goes back to the plus of the battery. When our circuit is on, an electric current flows from the battery to the bulb and then back to the battery. But if the textbooks were right, the bulb wouldn't light up because the flow of charged particles, electrons, is now moving in the opposite direction from the bulb. Now, let's look at the fields in this simple system. The red lines are the magnetic field. It always appears around the conductor with an electric current. The green lines are the electric field. It appears around every single electric charge. Place your hand so that your fingers are positioned in the direction of the electric field. Now bend them in the direction of the magnetic field. Your thumb points in the direction of the energy flux, from the battery to the light bulb. Now let's do the same thing, only on the section from the bulb to the battery. Take your right hand, bend your fingers, and voila! Your thumb is still pointing in the direction of the bulb, only it's turned upside down. That's why the bulb is working. The energy is still going from the source to the consumer. This is precisely how electricity is transported at the speed of light through the energy flux. Another proof that electrons don't flow directly from the power plant to your wall outlet is transformers. These are the boxes or barrels you see on power lines. Inside them, there are two coils that don't touch. Electrons don't jump from one coil to the other. When an electric current passes through one coil, this creates a magnetic field around it. This magnetic field creates an electric current in the opposite coil. This transforms the high voltage electric current to the current you have in your outlet. This is why these devices are called transformers. Now let's see how to create an electric current from scratch. You'll need to use generators. Although it looks like a complicated technology, it can be simplified to a magnet and a coil. All you have to do is rotate the magnet inside the coils. The constant motion of the magnetic field will create an electric current. You can also do the opposite, move the coils around the magnet. People produce most electricity on the planet by using such generators. Only the ways generators rotate differ. The world's most common generators need steam. First, you need coal or gas. You burn the fuel and heat the water. The water turns into steam and goes through special pipes to a turbine. This thing with a bunch of blades looks like an airplane engine, and it operates on a similar principle. The steam goes through all these blades and makes the turbine spin at an incredible speed. The turbine then makes the generator rotate. The magnet spins between the coils like crazy. All that's left to do is to connect some wires to the coils and you'll get your current. Then, the steam goes through these giant chimneys, cooling towers. Clouds of smoke that come out from them are not actually smoke, but steam. It usually rains artificially inside these towers. When water drops come into contact with the pipes carrying the hot steam from the turbine, the rain evaporates. The cooled steam in the pipes turns into water, then heats up again, turns into steam, spins the turbine, and so on. Nuclear power plants also create steam to spin the turbine. But they don't need fuel, they use nuclear energy. Heavy elements decay in a controlled chain reaction. It releases a colossal amount of energy in the form of heat. We take this heat and transfer it to the water. 
You know what happens next? The water turns into steam, spins the turbine, goes through the cooling tower, and back into the reactor. Again, all for the sake of spinning the generator. We have more environmentally friendly ways to produce electricity. Wind turbines. The wind rotates giant blades. That, in turn, spins a generator inside the wind turbine. Ta-da! Electricity is ready for consumption. On the downside, this method needs the wind to be constant. If the weather is calm, your TV might shut off at the worst possible moment. Wind turbines are also hard to maintain because you have to send someone up to the height of a 22-story building. Sometimes, the braking system of a wind turbine breaks down and the blades start spinning madly until they break. Another option is hydroelectric power plants. Here, we use a strong stream of water. Sometimes, it's the natural flow of a river. But in most cases, we create human-made waterfalls, like Hoover Dam. In the basin above, the water has much potential energy. The dam opens, and a powerful stream of water flows through a tunnel inside it. The turbine produces electricity and sends it further down the power lines. The water then continues its way down the river. Sometimes, hydroelectric power plants operate without such giant rivers. They create their own water supply. At night, when electricity is cheaper, pumps move the water through pipes into a reservoir at the top of a mountain. During the day, when people are awake and consume much electricity, the valves open. The water flows into the reservoir below, spinning the turbine and generating electricity. We also know how to get electricity without turbines or generators. Solar panels. Photovoltaic cells inside these panels convert sunlight into electrical energy. They're environmentally friendly and need no fuel. But we can only use them in places where there's enough sunlight. If you're thinking about which source of electrical energy you want to use, I've got bad news for you. You're already using most of them at the same time. The electric power delivery system is a vast grid. Imagine your house. It has lots of outlets and electrical appliances. If you need a toaster, you plug it into an outlet. Now zoom out. A huge city works the same way. To power it, you need to plug it into an outlet. The electric power delivery grid. Look at this chart. This is how we use electricity throughout the day. At night, the line goes down because most people are asleep. But some devices are still running, like air conditioners, street lights, pumps that pump water into your faucet, and many others. So the line never goes down to zero. Then we wake up and the line goes up sharply. We turn on TVs and radios, make ourselves toast, and heat food in microwaves. Our electrical energy consumption goes up. Then, during the workday, we don't use as much energy. When we get home in the evening, the consumption line needs to go up again, until we go to bed. And so it repeats every day. Let's take one week. If we shade the area of the chart under the line of electrical energy consumption, we get the total amount of electricity that we need during this time. Nuclear power plants run 24-7 and produce a steady amount of electricity. They are the foundation for vital city systems. Then, there are coal power plants. Along with nuclear plants, they produce minimal level of electricity we need to operate. Then, there are wind and solar power plants at the bottom of the chart. To meet people's demands, and I mean these spikes in consumption in the morning and evening, they use gas-fired power plants and hydroelectric power plants. It's because of the response time. When electricity consumption rises, it's necessary to produce energy very quickly. It would take almost a whole day to start a nuclear power plant and then stop it. A coal plant will also take a long time to heat up to the right temperature. The solution is gas plants. They can start generating electricity within minutes. Engineers know your daily routine even better than you. They know when most people wake up and thoughtfully start generating more electricity for you. Plus, they usually know your habits and traditions. For example, during the Super Bowl, people tend to visit their friends and neighbors. It means that several families watch only one TV. So, on the Super Bowl day, electricity consumption goes down, and the engineers know this. Everyone decorates their homes and stores with lights that consume electricity during winter celebrations. This means that at night, electricity consumption is higher than usual. You're going out with some friends. Good food, music, nice. You arrive, say hello to your people, and 
I don't like your outfit. One of your friends shouts out. He looks about as surprised as you are. Why is your haircut so awful? You ask him. You slap your hands over your mouth a little late, though. Why did you just say that? Another friend, Jennifer, starts saying how she didn't even want to come. She thought it'd be boring. Before you can stop her, you tell her you came just to spend time with her. You like, like her. Uncomfortable pause. A sweet Saturday night turns into one of the most awkward moments ever. That's what you tell the waiter when she comes over to offer you more water. It's like everything that pops into your head gets shot out of your mouth instantly. Your friends feel the same way, and they all agree, no more talking, in case someone else says something embarrassing. You walk down the street, thinking about what happened, and notice that people around you seem kind of excited. A huge man with an epic beard and leather jacket is talking loudly on the phone. Something about how his favorite color is pink, and that he wants to become a gardener, and that he hates riding a motorcycle. A second later, he blushes a deep red, mumbles something about forgetting everything he just said, ends the call, and runs off. A woman in front of you hails a cab that's passing by. Drive me for $10? She asks. Of course I will, even though I'm about to fall asleep. I don't want to drive a cab anymore. He covers his mouth too, but the damage is done. What a wonderful, wonderful day, shouts some guy on the other side of the street. He's wearing headphones, smiling, and clearly has no idea he just said that out loud. You ask another woman what time it is. I don't have time to take out my phone and I don't want to, she says, and immediately apologizes. So, why is everyone being so honest? From one moment to the next, the concept of lying, or just not saying every little thing that's in your head, has disappeared. You meet your neighbor in the elevator and tell him that the rock music he plays every night is loud and just pretty lame. He tells you your shoes are always dirty. You go into your apartment, put your phone on to charge, and turn on the news. The news anchors, well, he's talking about the weather and what's going on inside his body. Apparently, he ate a burrito this morning that had been in his fridge for about a month. A hurricane is coming to the southern regions, and a thunderstorm is already raging in my stomach. The broadcast gets interrupted. (coughs) Technical issues. The phone rings. It's the manager from your bank. She offers you a terrible loan. Those are her exact words. Then she says she hopes you won't be able to make the payments so that the bank can collect interest. You'll probably go bankrupt, and she'll get a year-end bonus. And then, there's a few seconds of silence, a gasp, some screaming, and she hangs up. Well, that was entertaining. Just then, you dream up an awesome plan. You need to track down as many of your friends as possible. Find out what they really think about you. You're not afraid of telling the truth, but hearing it from your friends could be interesting. But finding someone to talk to isn't that easy. The streets are noticeably emptier than they were before. People aren't leaving their homes. What if they say something terrible right in someone's face? Some people are just shy. Others are afraid of losing all their friends. In this new world, nobody can hide their true feelings. The entertainment industry goes into a meltdown. Video game companies can't lie about what kind of product they're developing. If there are any glitches or bugs, the CEO just tells everyone. It's impossible to hide anything anymore. Shares go into total freefall. You watch a teaser trailer for a new game, amazing graphics, music, crazy complicated storyline, and then it suddenly cuts to a bunch of code writers telling you that, in reality, the game will look much worse. Why even buy it? The same sort of thing's happening with the movie industry. Producers and stars can't hype up their new movie if they don't actually like it. Pretty much everybody stops doing live interviews or press events. I mean, you can't release a new blockbuster that all the actors in it already said was terrible. A lot of celebrities start telling people what they really think. And it doesn't end well for anyone. But humans just don't speak their mind now. They write it, too. You start to shed friends on social media, block them, tell them you're only friends with them to make you look more popular. People start making their profiles private and block you from tagging them. Online stories start writing much more honest product descriptions and online reviews. Those actually become awesome. 
you can really trust them. The like button gets a whole new makeover. You don't just like all your friends' photos anymore. You got to really like the photo. And if you don't, you find yourself writing comments. A lot of people start deleting their profiles. The whole world's economy becomes unstable. Shareholders and CEOs are afraid to give interviews. Share prices are all over the place. The solution? Keep silent and try not to think too much. Banks and insurance companies are closing down all over the world. Scammers are totally powerless. They just can't lie to you anymore. It's hilarious. Sort of. If you're applying for a new job, bad news. You can't pad your resume anymore. The upside, though, companies tell you up front about having to work overtime and that the coffee machine in the break room brews terrible coffee. Friends quarrel with friends, couples break up, close relationships become way more tense. If you're invited to a lame party, you can't play it cool and think up an excuse. You just blurt out that you don't want to go. It's a pretty big shock to the system. You're honest to everyone, even yourself. But after a few weeks, something changes. In the beginning, you were offended when people said what they thought right to your face. But now, you realize just how silly it is. So what if someone doesn't like you? Just shrug it off. Sure, you might lose some friends. But at the same time, you'll probably gain some new ones, real friends, who will have your back and will always be honest with you. Every time you tell the truth, it feels like a weight's been lifted off your shoulders. It helps people just be better. Sure, it can still be awkward, but humans seem more likely to actually solve their problems, not just pretend they don't exist. People start to treat the truth differently. Remember when you told someone they had something stuck in their teeth? It was uncomfortable for everyone. Now, everyone's grateful for your helpful comments. People in relationships become much happier. Talking, being honest, all that makes relationships much stronger. And another really interesting thing happens. If you like someone's hair, clothes, whatever, you can just say it. Since everyone's honest now, no one will think you're being creepy or anything. And this truth thing, it makes people more healthy. Since everyone's more relaxed and confident, stress-related health problems start to disappear. People stop being lazy. Since it's impossible to look your boss in the eye and lie about working all day, you either start working harder or just quit. Everything gets much simpler. Music even becomes more beautiful. More and more artists stop being afraid of being honest in their songs, and this brings them much closer to their audience. Directors, vloggers, producers, everyone starts making content about what they actually care about. Movies become more bold, provocative, and surprising. And if you want to lose yourself in some blockbuster action movie, you'll actually be able to find out if it's any good before you watch it. What a world!